good enough for now let's move on to the next one here so Filmwash is designed to give you a unique and customizable look so included in that some very very powerful unique styles so included in the first volume of Filmwash was some excellent black and white filters designed to really create some stunning high contrast black and white images um, so what we decided to do with volume 3 is take it in a slightly different direction so I'm going to use golden litho here let's call this tone so you can see that with some of these effects we've really taken it into a completely different uh, dimension and again we're keeping it fully customizable so you want a bit more glow well you come into the glow and the take the glow threshold bring that down slightly take the glow radius up you know you've got full control over your glows here um, you've also got your contrast here as well so you want to brighten things up slightly just play around with the gamma all very very nice um, another thing we've got just uh, just for a, a sort of very graphic style is our little graphic red here uh, and again let's just come in play around with our final contrast just gives you a very unique look So the film wash effects are really designed to work best if you um, prep and balance your footage first. Uh, so let's come in and just, just for the sake of, uh, of this example here, it's lacking a bit of contrast in it. So I'm going to come into my original footage here and just come to the, uh, the color correction, just use a very, very quick levels just to bring the input black back up there and just, just make it pop very slightly. So you'll see that once we've done that, when we come in and we uh, we bring another effect onto our onto our tone layer here, let's come into the magentas. Uh, let's look at Polaroid time here. So you can see that without prepping the footage first, it really lacks a bit of that pop there. Of course, we we can go in and and uh, use the final contrast here. But if we're applying a film wash to, a, to an entire sequence, for example, going in and prepping your, your footage is, is, a, uh, is a must. Cool, and I really like, uh, I really like that Polaroid time. I love what it, love what it does to the, to the image. Let's show us before and after, before and after. Cool, and let's, uh, again, let's just boost it up just a slight bit. Let's come to our dark rectangular vignette. Boost that up there. Uh, let's create actually quite a, a wide mark here. Again, we'll just blur this up a huge amount and bring that underneath the tone there. And you see that that's blending in a lot better. Let's take my opacity down slightly. So we've got a great amount of flexibility, not only with the with the film wash effects, but also with the vignettes here. And you've got your choice of uh, ellipses, rectangles, um, dark light. You know, you, you really get to get to choose yourself. That's nice. I'm liking that. And again, let's just show you a complete before and after. Let's just solo this layer here. So you can see just with basically with five clicks, we can we can transform that into that. Lovely. OK. Now, something you might begin to notice. Uh, and it might be difficult to see, depending on the. Quality of the uh, compression for this tutorial is you might be getting banding going on in certain areas of the footage. So you can see you've got color stripes going down here. 
Now that's a consequence of our project being in 8 bits per channel. Um, in After Effects 6 and 7, we can boost that up to 16 bits per channel and you can see that disappears straight away. So let's have a look, you can see the stripes there. Boost that into 16, immediately those stripes go away. Uh, with CS3 and CS4, we've also got the choice of coming in to 32 bit per channel uh, colors as well. So this gives us access to floating point um, calculations, which are really, really great when we're working with blurs and blend modes. Most of the filters that are included with a film wash work, work great in 32 bits per channel straight away. And the ones that don't are designed so the processing pipeline is, is kept as intact as possible throughout the entire process. So quality was really, really the most important thing when designing these, these looks. So let's come to our, our next piece of footage here. This is a, a wet beach. This is, this is HD footage. The previous two shots were HDV. I'm going to have to flush my cache because I'm running out of memory a little bit. So you can see this is looking fairly sort of drab and, and, and dull. So we need to fix that. And we're going to do that again. We're going to just add a, uh, an adjustment layer here, call it my, my tone layer. And we're going to come into my yellows now, and I'm going to add a warm summer effect to it. So that's sort of brightened everything up a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to come into my final contrast here. Just open that up a little bit. Just bring that in slightly and just really brighten everything up just a, a, a bit more. Get a bit more contrasted as well. Just open that up. So we can see the uh, the before and after. Let's just zoom that up to 100%. So before and after, just with a with a couple of clicks there. But as you can see, the um, the waves here they're still looking uh, a little bit drab, a little bit dull. So as part of the um, extras in here we've got a little filter that's called Skyline Enhance. So let's just double click on that and we can see that again, it brings in a little shape layer for us. And we can just come in and just drag that out. And in fact, what I might do here, swap that up just so we get a slightly better gradient going down there. It's looking okay, let's change, change that blend mode. To a, uh, to a soft light there, and we can see the difference that's making. Nice, now the only problem is, is that um, it's affecting the hair quite a lot and the, and the face a lot as well. So I'm gonna show you a very, very quick technique to, to get rid of that as well here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my wet beach layer and just put it over the top. So I'm going to make a very, very quick Luma mask out of this. So I'm just going to come into my levels quickly and just create a very, very high contrast mask here. So that's looking pretty, pretty good there. And let's just blur this up slightly. Okay, let's use my fast blur. And you can see with the 32 bit per channel, that I'm working in here, the blurs and the levels look so much different in 8-bit and 16-bit to how they do in 32-bit. So it's actually it's really nice working in 32-bit here. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is just come in, set this to track mat, luma mat, and you can see that it's cutting out most of the uh, the hair there, the darkest parts there. Everything else just looks a little bit like um, some light wrap going on, so I, I quite like that. So that's just a really, really quick hike on mask with the uh, making a luma mat there. Just a nice little, uh, nice little extra technique for you. So that's taking us from a before to after, before, after. You just see how quick and simple that is with film wash. <laughs>